Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the roll modes on the automatic pilots of the Boeing 737. Now there have been a lot of really really good things out there as far as autopilots and I'm sitting there going well we should probably contribute some of the things that I use including goofy things such as flying donuts uh, without having to touch the controls as well as control wheel steering. We're going to be taking a look at a little bit of that as well as you know kind of how it's used and uh, sort of the different methods that you can make it work well for you. Positive rate of climb. I love that. <laughs> Give it just a few moments, and this thing just sort of powers its way to victory. Now, first things first, uh, when you're inside of a Boeing 737, and I just take off, and you don't touch anything on the autopilot control panel, the MCP over there on the right, uh, what you're going to have, of course, is um, no specific component. So if we were just to go ahead and order the autopilot to just turn on right this second, I'll go ahead and get a nice gentle turn going in here just to demonstrate. What'll happen is, is this. You will get a new warning. You will see this thing that says CWSR and CWSP. What that is, is that is control wheel steering. Uh, that's your autopilot's way of saying, the only thing I'm providing you with right now is actually stability. I'm not doing anything more for you. As a matter of fact, uh, when you come over on this side, they actually have a manual button you can engage for control wheel steering. Now, control wheel steering is a little weird uh, because if I actually were to take the controls and I were to go ahead and tip it to the left and let me push the nose down just a little bit and let go, what the autopilot will actually attempt to do is it'll attempt to hold it in that point. Now, if I actually turn my flight director, you'll notice there's no information. Excuse me, autopilots. Uh, excuse me, air traffic control, I'm talking. Um, one of the things you'll notice here is it actually holds this. And uh, one of the most incredible things about control wheel steering is it turns your Boeing 737 kind of into a light version of an Airbus. It's almost like a fly-by-wire. So if I put it right here, roughly, and again, I haven't touched the trim wheel as you probably listen, you can hear how the system is basically trying to hold me at the position I left it at. Uh, the best way to think about it is kind of like a, a poor man's version of a fly-by wire, which is actually a pretty neat mode. But what we're here to show today, of course, are the roll modes, uh, not specific the control wheel steering mode that you just see over there on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and activate a couple different tools here. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate a lateral navigation. Uh, that's going to be the most basic of your modes. Uh, by the way, did you notice when I hit that, that the control wheel steering light went out and it switched to control wheel steering P for pitch? This simply means that it is attempting to find a specific altitude for us. Um, of course, our altitude today is 8,000. So while it's uh, running up there at maximum speed, I might as well just sort of help it out a little bit. Again, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just hit VNAV real fast. And that way it's going to lock me out when we get to 8,000. So there's a couple different modes that we have as far as a roll control on our 737. Uh, the simplest mode, of course, is going to be lateral navigation mode. Now, lateral navigation mode is simply a mode whereby the aircraft is going to attempt to follow the flight management system's course. Now, right now, we've dialed in a relatively simple course. I can actually zoom in on a little bit here, and you can see very clearly kind of how that course goes. Now, there's a couple of weird things about LNAV you have to be very, very mindful of. LNAV has an interest in following the magenta line of safety, but it also has an interest specifically on achieving the waypoint that it's been pointed towards. Another interesting thing with lateral navigation here, the LNAV button, is you have to have a route that doesn't have breaking points on it. In this case, we have a direct path basically to where we're going today. If for some reason we had a discontinuity in here, the lateral navigation would slip off and you couldn't even engage it. Another fun thing with lateral navigation, of course, is you have the ability to basically uh, alter your plane as you go and then engage LNAV in a kind of a reactivated kind of a thing. Now, one of the interesting things you'll notice here is if I were to go over here and shut LNAV off, you'll notice that we switched to control wheel steering again. Now, that's going to be an important point in a few minutes here, but um, I'll go ahead and I'll show you why that's kind of interesting in a moment. So the next mode we have, of course, is VOR LOC. This is a VOR localizer. This will lock onto whatever mode that you have selected in your navigation radio. Now, if I were to float down here real quickly to my navigation radio, you'll notice active right now is set to 11050. Uh, now, if I were doing an ILS landing or something like that, I could come in here and notice it recognizes an ILS. I go flip. And now it knows this is it. But let's say for some reason I wanted to do a Hartford VOR. I can come in here and say 114.90. And if I flip it, it'll switch to 114.90. Now, the interesting thing, too, of course, is if we float up there, you'll actually see that 114.90 is respected and recognizes it having a DME value of about 36.0 DME. That's how far away it is. The other thing you'll notice, too, is I'm going to flip down my heads-up display here. This thing's kind of handy for stuff like this, is I can actually dial in the course that I want to follow. If I were to reach over here and grab my course select, you will notice that, uh, let's say I wanted to fly directly into Hartford VOR rather than using my lateral navigation. I could actually come in here like this, and you could actually see both down here on my screen. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see that a little better. 
Uh, you'll notice that actually as I move this, you can see the course that I'm approaching it. So let's say I wanted to do a bit of an offset course here. I want to come, uh, let's say I want to do something like that, just like hit it to a slightly different angle. If I were to press a VOR lock now, what will actually happen here is this aircraft will scoot scoot over there. Now you're sitting there going, it didn't scoot scoot over there. Why not? The reason being is if you take a look down here, you'll notice LNAV is in green, which means it's the current mode, and VOR localizer is set in white, which means it's armed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut that back off. I'm going to turn off LNAV. I'm going to press VOR lock. Now what we're doing is we're saying, please use the localizer as the purpose of the source of our rotation, our left and right turning. So of course, so we're not anywhere near that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tip my control over here to the left, and I'm just going to let go. Now, what you're probably saying is, uh, wait a minute, you mean you can steer the roll independent of the pitch? Yeah, it's uh, one of those fun little tricks that a lot of people miss, and actually works really well in turbulence. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually flying the plane while the pitch control is doing its thing. The lateral navigation, of course, is uh, just chilling. Of course, um, we have all the rest of the system, such as my thrust and stuff. That's all being handled automatically for us as well. So now what's going to happen here is we're still armed. I'm going to go ahead. Don't worry about that. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And you can see our aircraft is basically uh, making its way over to that VOR point. Now, remember, I use that special mode control wheel to get us close. But now notice the moment we get close enough to the VOR to capture the VOR, our control wheel steering mode immediately goes pop and disengages and actually activates a separate mode, VOR lock mode, that's now actually going to be following this course all the way into Hartford. Now that's one of those cool little tricks that you can use and you basically hand fly the plane. Now let's say that we get an instruction from air traffic control that says, um, could you go ahead and uh, proceed uh, on a heading of 300, please, and uh, re-intercept your course. All right, so there's a couple different ways we could do that. Uh, one thing we could do, of course, is we could come to VOR lock. We could shut that off because it's uh, now control wheel steering. Now what we could do is we could actually tip the plane again and fly the plane over to that particular heading. The other thing we could do is we could use the next mode, which is going to be heading hold. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dial in a desired heading here. I'm going to fly a heading of, uh, let's call it a 330 here. I'm going to press heading cell. Now, heading cell says, please use my currently selected heading for the purposes of getting to where I need to go. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is heading cell is the current mode, but remember how we wanted to capture this course here? So what we're actually going to do is something so scandalous, it's not. I'm going to press LNAV. And what's going to happen is it's going to immediately capture LNAV. Now, a lot of you are probably sitting there going, why didn't it hold your heading until it got close and then activate LNAV? The reason it didn't do that is because it was already close enough and on course to my original course to actually accurately capture it. So it actually flipped off of that mode itself. So one of the neat little tricks here is uh, if you really, really wanted to get yourself all the way to that line and then turn, you could have flipped on control wheel steering, done your little adjustment there, and then gotten yourself back on your specific heading. Now, the heading select mode is a very, very useful for us uh, because it gives us that ability to basically, like I said, hold a certain heading. So let's go ahead and press heading cell again. I'm going to notice uh, LNAV is going to pop off here uh, because we're no longer in that mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the plane uh, start kind of turning itself a little bit here. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'll uh, get ourselves all set up. Keep in mind, you have heading hold another aircraft. Uh, this one is heading, heading select. Swing over, coming up to 330. The aircraft's got us on a pretty hefty bank. The people in the back are wondering why my drink is sliding across my tray table. Uh, folks, this is important science that I'm doing here. You're going to have to all relax until we get to a position where we can actually use the plane. <laughs> so we all are going to level ourselves off here. And I'm just going to wait for the plane to level itself off uh, pretty nicely, uh, which it shall do in just a moment there. And it's going to get us on a nice, solid heading of 330. And the autopilot on this thing is so beautifully tuned. Literally, basically, perfectly tuned. So I'm going to come over here and shut off heading cell mode. Now, what you're going to notice is it's going to pop us back to control wheel steering. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and arm LNAV. Now, what you're going to see here is LNAV is immediately going to fire back up because we're still in range of that particular course. So I'm going to cancel LNAV, and I'm going to let the plane start driving. Now, because we have pitch hold right now, even though the aircraft is tipped, our control wheel steering mode has actually kicked in, and it's holding the last thing that we did. So if I take myself a slightly tighter bank here, this is a pretty aggressive, like 30 degrees here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to select a specific heading to get us back to that place that we were worried down and, uh, when we were taking the VOR into Hartford. So it looks to me like this 240 looks pretty groovy to me. So I'm going to press heading cell here. And uh, that's going to activate that select mode. Of course, the aircraft is going to adjust its bank angle based on what we've limited to right over here. And it's going to slowly start hiking its way over to the original course that we wanted to actually navigate on. Now, this is where it gets kind of cool. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and press the VOR lock again. Again, this is where we want to be flying this little green line of safety. Now, when I press that button, you will notice that it turns white. The reason it held white here is because of the fact we're not close enough to actually receive the signal to actually navigate along it. Um, we can receive the signal, of course, but we're not close enough to the selected course to be able to safely actually start navigating it towards Hartford. Now, if we were silly people, what we do is we do one of these things and watch what happens when we get really, really close to that course. In a moment, uh, you're going to see this little thing start sliding, VOR lock. Just like that, snaps on, and now we are once again following the VOR course uh, towards our Hartford position there. Now, for my purposes, I'm going to go flip over to LNAV. Now, there's one other subtle mode in here that we haven't seen. Again, we're dealing with just the roll modes today. We're going to be taking a look at the pitch modes a little later. And that is the fact that when you're on approach, we can actually split an approach. Um, we actually have a couple different tools. Some of the old ones actually had a glide slope button independent of the approach button. The best way to think about this is the approach button combines a localizer with a glide slope in one button. The actual glide slope button isn't a button for us. Uh, one of the interesting things you could do with this, of course, is if I were to come over here and press the app button, you will notice that FAC and Glide Path both open up visually here. So looking for these particular approaches, which uh, we don't have selected right now. So it creates a rather interesting situation. You also get this lovely little thing in here that tells you the altitude of this, which I, I don't know, I get a kick out of that. You've got the little piece with the course setting right there, and you can have the inks course as well as the outbound course it's just a cool little deal like that but one of the things you'll notice here is because i press the app button it's desperately trying to latch on to this information that i have pre-programmed as a matter of fact though we got to start our descent we're almost there go ahead and I'll reduce this just a little bit here because it's uh, going to be 2100 feet the magic altitude here there we go sweet so one of the things you'll notice here, of course, and again, we're just concentrating on roll today, is it's desperately trying to find it. And it's actually armed the approach, even though we're this far away. Also notice that VNAV path has been selected here. It's trying to get us down to the approach. Now, some people are sitting here going, well, that's pretty cool. Does that mean it will actually start doing the approach when it gets there? Well, you'll observe that as this aircraft is uh, spiraling itself downwards, it's struggling a little bit. It's uh, basically now having a bit of a problem here. And you can actually see uh, visually that it's desperately trying to latch on to that channel at that specific course uh, coming in for a landing here. And uh, you can see it's completely gone off the rails here. We're at FAC, we're at glide path mode. This thing is uh, continuing to descend. It's uh, trying to find that other waypoint and it's going all over the place because it's basically trying to combine two different things at once, which is of course, it's vertical navigation now with its glide path, which is not its glide slope. So a lot of the questions that people always ask is like, what's a good time to push the APP button? Uh, the good time to press the APP button is uh, when you're ready for the approach, uh, not, not kind of willy-nilly at any point. Because otherwise, it, it creates some rather interesting shenanigans. And one of the things I find most fascinating here is it's actually doing a bang-up job of keeping me on glide path. And it's got this like strange obsession with desperately getting itself to this position honey here and it's just it's kind of interesting but um definitely not recommended uh, definitely a button you want to preserve for next time so one of the things you'll find fascinating of course is this aircraft will successfully turn it will successfully line itself up and it will actually successfully put itself onto the glide slope and the localizer for the purposes of landing the aircraft and it's one of those things where it's like it just really, 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 really tried really hard to succeed at that particular task. And I don't know, things like that are just kind of fun. Next time, we'll take a look at the pitch modes. Enjoy.